Well, as well as recapping on where we got to yesterday, today's task where we find a secret number is really about understanding about inverses. And in maths, we can order calculations in different ways. And we see that subtraction is the inverse of addition and uh, division is the inverse of multiplication. And understanding that when we have different operations to do. So this, again, it will be good for problem solving and really good for so many other aspects of maths as well. Uh, let's get started. So as has become our new normal, we're going to start by looking back on yesterday's extend task. Um, so this was the same prompt that we had a look at before. And what I like to think about to start off with is, well, what do the numbers here have to be? What do we know about them? Um, so we know that this is 16 here. Um, so that tells us that this number here, if this side is going to be more than 16, this one has got to be 9 or more. Because if it's 8 or less, it's going to be too small. But that sign would be the other way around. Um, similarly, looking at this one here, a number divided by 2 is going to be less than 4. 4 is going to be more. So I've got to think, well, I want this number to be smaller rather than larger. And what's the cutoff point? Well, it's 8. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. So it can't be an 8 in there, or it can't be anything more than 8. It couldn't be an 8, couldn't be a 9. Um, similarly here, this one is going to have to be 6 or less. And then... Actually, if you look at this one, it, it can't be a 6. It would have to be more than a 6 if I'm adding something to 18. Um, so that's like a kind of guide to start with. So let's say I'm looking, first of all, let's have a look at set A. Well, I know that there's only one place that, that like here, there has to be a 9 or more here. So I'm going to have to use the 9, and it has to be there. So that's my starting point. Um, and I'm going to cross out that 9 so I know that it's been used. Um, and then, again, let's have a look. So the 8... Um, this is a slightly different thought process, but I know that the 8 cannot go here and it cannot go there, um, as we've just described. Um, so now, actually, the only place the 8 can go is up here. So I would look for a combination and think, how can that work? And the only one that would work with the 8 at the top was if we had 8 threes are 24. And then I need to think 8 threes are 24. So if I add 6 there... Um, so this time, rather than, I, I'm thinking, well, where is the only place that the 8 can go? Um, and it's there. So that leaves us with a 5 and a 7. Well, I know that the 7 can't go there. Um, so then the 5 would have to go there. And then 7 divided by 2, well, that is actually less than 4. So set 8, there we go. Set 8, we can use that. Let's move on with the same thought process um, to trialling set B, a slightly different set of numbers. So again, I would start off with thinking about that 9. Um, the 9, it can, it must go here. Um, now the 8 can't go here and it can't go there, so I'm thinking, do, can the 8 go in the top line? So if I had 8 times 3, um, that would be 24. Um, so I'd need a 6 to add, but there isn't a 6 here. So if I had 18 uh, plus 8, that's 26. But actually 26 isn't a multiple of 3. Um, so actually this one just doesn't work. Set B, there isn't a solution to um, using those digits there. But let's have a look at set C. So this time we've got three different 9s. Um, now we knew that from what we described before that 9s can't go here and here. So I guess I would need to check, is this possible? Well, we know, yes, a 9 can go here. Does this work? 9 times 3 is 27. Well, 18 is two 9s, and there's another 9. So, yeah, they are both three lots of 9s. It's equivalent to 27. So I'm going to cross off all my 9s. So that just leaves these 6s. And, yes, 9 subtract 6 is 3, and that is more than 2. And 6 divided by 2 that is less than four. So there we go. We know that that set works as well. So today's main task uh, centers around inverse operations. It's called secret number because we're going to have to try and find a, a mystery number. Um, and it's really about understanding the order that operations are done in. I'm going to unpack that now and then you're going to get stuck into that task. Um, so let's say this. My number was, and then I add something and I multiply by something and my new number is. Now here, there's lots of possibilities that, that my number could be. Um, so, But let's say my number was 12, and then I added something, and I multiplied by something, and my new number is 160. 
Now, what might have happened? What could I have added and what might I have multiplied by? So see if you can find one way or even different ways that could be done. Pause the video, have a go. So let's have a look at one or two possibilities. So it could be if my number was 12, I guess I could have added eight to get to 20. Um, 20 multiplied by eight is 160. It could have been that. Or maybe what I did is I added 28 to get to 40. And I multiplied my number by four and that got me to 160. And really when I was thinking about this, I was working back from 160 and think, what can I multiply to make 160? Um, so here when I was thinking four, so, so I've got to add to get this up to 40. And I had to think almost the other way around. So let's see if we can do a, another take on this question. Um, so my number was, and then whatever it was, I multiplied it by five and I subtracted seven. What, what could my new number be? Um, so uh, see if you can come up with again for this one a number of possibilities. Pause the video, have a go. And let's have a look at a couple. So let's say my number was one. If I multiplied it by five, that'd be five. Subtracted seven, I'd have uh, minus two. Or maybe uh, my number was six. I multiplied by five to get to 30. And then I subtracted seven and it's 23. Um, so I could check that's right, 23. Before I subtracted seven, the number must have been 30. And before I multiplied by five, if I divide by five, that's it. My number must have been six. Now, have a look at this one. If it was, um, I had a number and I multiplied it by five and I subtracted seven, my new number became 38. And to work out what my original number was, I guess the first thing I'd have to think was, well, what was it before I subtracted seven? It, Pause the video and see if you can uh, if you can think about that. And uh, let's have a look. Um, so before I subtracted seven, um, my number it must have been forty five, um, because then I subtract seven and it's thirty eight. Um, so well, well, what was this forty five um, before I multiplied it by five? It must have been nine. Now of course I can check that nine times five forty five. 45 subtract 7, 38. There we go. It works. So if I have this example, um, now, now my new number is in the range 20 to 30. And if I'm finding one possible answer there, um, I guess one way I could do is let's say my number was 4. I can multiply by my number by 6. Uh, that'd be 24 and subtract 2 and that would be in this range 20 to 30. Now now that's the kind of structure of the main task that we're going to get right into now um, and it looks a little bit like this. Well it looks very like this actually. I have a secret number. I multiply my secret number by 3 and I add 7. This makes a whole number in the 20s. What could my secret number be? Now for this one I want all possible values for the secret number. Um, so all of the possible secret numbers, not just one. See if you can find every one that it could be. We'll have a look at them uh, after this short pause. Let's see if we can work through to find all the possible secret numbers. So could the secret number be four? Um, three lots of four plus seven? No, that's 19. Um, that's less than 20. So the secret number we know from that, it's got to be more than four. Um, so could it be five? Uh, three fives, add the seven, 22. There we go, it's in the right range. The secret number could be five. So next, it makes sense to try six if I'm gonna find all the possibilities. Uh, three lots of six, add that seven. Could that be right? 25. Next one I'm gonna try is seven. Um, three sevens, and then add another seven. Um, so secret number, yeah, it could be seven. What about eight? Could the secret number be eight? Uh, um, if I go 3, 8 to 24, add that 7, 31. So that is more than the range that we're working in. So the secret number, well, it could be 5 or 6 or 7. That's all the possibilities. So for a bit more, click on the blue link underneath the video. We've got this extend task. Um, so this time you're going to find your own little code for creating a secret number. Um, the, the number you make has got to be in the 40s, 40 to 49. And there's got to be exactly two possible values. So you have to think really carefully about how you design your example. 
Now, if you want to go a little bit further, you can change the challenge in your own way. So maybe you're looking for a whole number in the 70s and maybe that there's three possible values instead of two. Or, you know, you might do that in, in your own way. But um, really challenge yourself um, and good luck with that. And be absolutely sure to be back tomorrow. It's going to be epic and I cannot wait to see you then.